My name is Norman Armour. I'm currently working with the Australia Council for the Arts on international development within North America. Before that, I worked with the PUSH International Performing Arts Festival, of which I was also a co-founder. Prior to that, I co-founded and headed up a multidisciplinary theatre company called Rumble Theatre, which still goes today. I live and work and play in amongst the unceded territories of the Coast Salish peoples here in Vancouver on the west coast of Canada. Hot sticker. I moved here from Toronto. I'm a couple of generations Irish-Scottish, but I've lived here for 40 years. I came here in 78 to play frisbee. I was a, a semi-professional frisbee player. And I moved away and I was drawn back and I came back and I started to go to school eventually at Simon Fraser University. I drove cab for 12 years for blacktop cabs. Did a lot of different jobs to survive in the summertime and to pay for my schooling and such. After I graduated in 86, I worked a lot in the United States. I worked in Winnipeg and Toronto, but I always found myself coming back to Vancouver. I had been there or been involved with PUSH for over 15 years, you know, its conception and its early days and Katrina Dunn and myself co-founding it and such, and then it becoming its own organization. It came out of two existing organizations, one of them Rumble Productions and the other Touchstone Theatre. I felt I'd achieved a fair amount of things with the festival and establishing it internationally as well as, of course, locally and nationally. Push is, is a festival, so it was very much in that format or that platform or that idea of it being a festival as the thing that might interest people. The festival was, in its original intentions and such, and goals, I think, were we needed enough, an aggregate of activity and performances to be able to attract international presenters to perhaps visit Vancouver to see Vancouver work, but also Canadian work from elsewhere in the country, and then also internationally work, whether from Taiwan or otherwise. We wanted to create a platform, a situation, a moment for which Vancouver artists could have their work seen but also tested and challenged could find themselves in a room with their counterparts and with presenters and possibly funders and other kinds of industry stakeholders from around the world to talk about the issues and the trends and the themes of the moment. So it was a combination of artistic, industry, and then I think lastly it was also cultural in the sense to say that Vancouver had something special to offer that is you know, it's still a relatively very young city, right? It's not always been seen as at the center of some kind of, you know, energy around contemporary performing arts practice, when in fact we know that's not true. In fact, it is. So it, it was also about local pride, but that local pride in relationship to the rest of the country, in relationship to internationally. And it wasn't to say that we were the best of this or that, but it was about trying to tease out what was perhaps particular to Vancouver. Work and ideas and a way of working and a type of work that was being created that perhaps wasn't happening in Montreal and wasn't happening in Toronto or Calgary. And in a sense, again, it wasn't an act of promotion. The intention was around exchange. If this artist in Vancouver is thinking these kinds of ways, is there an artist elsewhere in the world that would feel like it was connected to it? And that we could perhaps bring that work in and say, hey, if you're trying to figure out this Vancouver artist, maybe it'll help us to see them through the eyes of this artist from Buenos Aires. Because their work is in parallel. It's almost, if not directly in dialogue, it's certainly a sense of kinship to it. So we would bring in a show that the concept was already figure it out. It had been done multiple places in the world, but it would involve local designers, local actors and production people to realize the iteration here in Vancouver as a reflection on Vancouver in the context of this artistic practice. So we were often trying to find Vancouver artists together in the room with visiting international artists working on a project that was iterative, that it had various editions and such. The festival has always had that at its heart, that it was co-founded by two artists, that there was a sense of responsibility to the artistic scene here, that it would be meaningful, and that the ownership of the festival really had to be owned locally. Locally by the audiences, by the donors, by partners like yourself, creating artists, they had to feel a sense of pride. It had to be owned as something that was meaningful and 
unique to Vancouver. History, I mean, it's an obvious answer, but to look to history here, to look to First Nations history with the Squamish and the Musqueam and the Tsleil-Waututh to understand what this place is prior to colonial contact and how through that contact, those cultures changed, were oppressed, shifted, survived and, re and resisted the kind of forces that were certainly at play that had no interest in them succeeding. I think that's the first thing is to take into account what the history of this place is and who was here first. One of the things that's interesting about Vancouver is, is that it is certainly a place where waves and waves and waves of immigration and migration here, but it's the interactions. I think Vancouver is an interesting place. The interactions between one culture and another and what the consequences of that been, good and bad. And where the city sits now in terms of the extraordinary range of cultural identities and cultural histories and languages and customs and perspectives and viewpoints that exist here in the city. There's a remarkable confluence and intersection of things at play here. While at the same time, I'd like to think that it's a fairly progressive part of the world. You know, I think there's a sense of, in Vancouver, of a desire to remain connected to the world at large. I think it's partly why Bush succeeded is that there was a hunger for ideas from elsewhere, notions of difference and debate and dialogue and again, possibility and such. But I think that's probably the first thing is to place oneself to go, okay, who before me from the place that I'm coming from was here, is here and what that history has been and such to understand the crossovers and the intersections of that, I think is a, is a really great starting point. just something about Vancouver where you could be taken on your own merits. You could be taken on what you stood for, how you acted, what you were now, not who your descendants were or how much money you had. And that I found very free, having come from Ontario, which has a lot of sense of who's upper class, who's middle class, who's upper middle class on the way down. And there was a sense of real possibility here that genuine action and genuine intent could be something that would be responded to on its own merits, not by your name, not by how much supposed power you had or influence you had, but it was the value of your ideas. And I've always argued that in Vancouver, as far as the art scene is, that the capital is not money, it's people and what they care about, what they're passionate about, what they're willing to dedicate themselves and commit themselves to. And Vancouver, you know, you have to be ingenious. Nothing comes easy here. And people are very discerning here. They may not know of a certain artist from Taiwan, but they're very, very discerning. Their relationship to the work is they want value. They want something that means something to them, that helps them to better understand who they are or their society or the world today or the challenges they may face as an individual. So I find in Vancouver in particular, there's such a really, really attuned sense of what is value on their own terms. My name is Norman Armour. I'm a consultant. I work currently with the Australia Arts Council on development for North America. I live here in Vancouver on the unceded territories of the Coast Salish peoples, the Squamish, the Musqueam and the Tsleil-Waututh. And I am different, just like you. <laughs>